The world today views surgery as exceedingly complicated and exceedingly expensive. And these fears drive many people away from considering the development of surgical services in underserved parts of the world. The belief that we'll never get the resources together to do this. How can we provide the same level of care in New York as we can provide in a rural village in Uganda? Our belief is that we can accomplish this in an economic way and in a high quality way. I think we're doing a very special thing here with this project in Chibira Village because it will represent a model, an example, for what might be done around the world to take a bite out of a very major problem and that is the absence of surgical services to the majority of the world's population. Mike was really focused on how do you build basically a surgical system for a setting like Uganda, which doesn't have surgical services. But he immediately realized that you actually had to redesign what surgery meant. Our approach begins with the recognition that all surgery, particularly very complicated surgery, may be out of the reach of some regions. And if one accepts this as a limitation, the beginning of a project like this, you can concentrate your efforts on the lion's share of surgical needs, which may represent anywhere between 65 and 70% of all surgical needs in these regions. They can't get an appendix removed. They can't get a hernia repair. The reality is that it's, it's built in the middle of nowhere. We get maybe about 30% of regular grid power, and we probably get about maybe 30% of regular water supply through the local town tap. And those two factors itself forces us to come up with a unique way of designing to make the building self-sustaining. We looked at the banana leaves and it was wonderful to think about how they were both collecting sunlight and also providing shade. We realized that up until now most solar panels have just been used to collect light, but they're also creating shade and there was kind of a moment of, wait, we can do both. We wanted to keep it to the minimum as possible and use the maximum local resources that are available. I think the, the techniques that we use to build the building are ones that have, shall we say, stood the test of time. The use of manual labour, we've almost lost the art of that. And so seeing guys manoeuvring dirty great water tanks around by hand, using planks, sliding things down, it's stuff that wouldn't occur to us. If we take everything back to basics, it works. And I think this, this project has proved that. It's not just about coming in there, throwing together some cement and bricks and creating a facility. It's about engaging the community and making them a participant in this development. The ability to have a Ugandan surgeon on site with the patient and a New York surgeon at a console here in New York operating at the same time because of this internet connectivity represents something that will make a quantum change in what can be offered in a facility of this nature. The project is just the first of its kind. If this is successful, it could be a model of what could happen in many other places. It's a very, very powerful example of how with tremendous focus, a little bit of philanthropy and capital, but to show that that can be done in a very effective way. All of us are looking for people to look up to and say, how can we improve things? And someone just needs to take a leap and take a step forward and say, this is how it gets done.
What's attractive about this project is we think we can do a tremendous amount of good for a relatively small amount of money. The possibilities are endless. There's nurses that need jobs and doctors that want to learn and they want to learn from us and we want to learn from them. It's a real partnership. It's a very exciting and I'm really looking forward for it. I can't wait for it to start. It's going to change the way surgery is being done in Africa. It may sound a bit melodramatic, the idea that everyone has a right to health care, but if everyone stood back and thought for a moment, it makes very good sense. It should be something as open to everyone as the ability to breathe air, ability to drink water. The thing that gets people going is the ability that they can participate in a meaningful way in changing the course of surgical care, first in a small little village in Chibira, Uganda, and next maybe in hundreds and hundreds of other regions around the world.